and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi folks, I'm Bob Schrupp, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. Because we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. We got a lot of requests for this one, Brad. Yes. Stop destroying your back when gardening. We're going to show you 12 golden tips. There you go. For and it's golden that, years. that time of year, gardening people are really getting into it. At the end of the program, by the way, we're going to show you my wife's favorite <laughs> product for using in the garden. And she actually uses it around the house, too. She loves this thing. Maybe she'll come on in and get in the video. Yeah, we'll give her an endorsement. Uh, <laughs> by the way, if you're new to our channel, please take a second to subscribe to us. We provide videos on how to stay healthy, fit, pain-free, and we upload every day. Also, go to BobandBrad.com because we're always giving something away. Yeah. What it is right now, I don't know. But check. It's a wall anchor? Okay, a wall oh, anchor exercise unit. Say no more. Yeah. You can also find it on Facebook. It'll be pinned at the top of the page. Go to Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok if you want a short version of our program. Let's get started, Brad. We got 12 of them. First one. That's a dozen. Yeah. First one, don't do any gardening early in the morning. Oh. Wait mm -hmm. one to two hours from sleeping because what happens is during the night, your body you're the the actual the discs that are between the vertebrae of mm -hmm. your back they fill up with fluid so your back is more vulnerable to injury for the first hour or so maybe two hours of when you're getting up so don't jump out of bed and jump right into the garden right walk around a little bit if you walk around for like a half hour you can start gardening then because the the water compresses out right and that's just a natural uh, uh, cycle of the discs. Right. They, they bring it keeps in them fluid. healthy. Yep. At night they bring in fluid, and throughout the day the body weight compresses it. They it's imbibe fluid. Imbibition. Yes. Yeah, there the we technical go. Technical term. All right. Number two, because a lot of what you're going to do for gardening is going to involve having your back somewhat flexed forward. Sure. We recommend that you do some press ups or reverse back bends, or maybe even the hallelujah stretch before you do any gardening and maybe throughout while you're doing it. Right. Let me show you what I mean. Do you want to hold on to that, Brad? What am I going well, to do with this Just show? get out of the way. <laughs> so these are some of the press-ups you could do prior to gardening. And I do, anytime before I'm going to do some heavy work, Brad, right. I do some of these press-ups like this. So I get my hands beneath my shoulders. I'm, I'm arching the back in the opposite direction of what mm. I'm going to be using it for when I do the lifting. This is... Uh, you know, if you happen to be an elderly person or if you know you have spinal stenosis or you have spondylolisthesis like myself, that you're not going to do. And yeah. there's probably about 20% of the people out there, I'm just kind of giving them yeah, ballpark. Yeah, that's not going to be comfortable. You could go slightly into extension Yeah, because you do a little bit of that, don't you? I do. Brad's got spondy. Right. Oh. I, I do, but I won't do repeated ones. Right. Okay. Um, but I, I work it gently. Um, your flexion may also be occurring in the mid-back. If that's the case, then oh, what works yeah. really well is to take a ball that you get from any big box store. Mm -hmm. And this one's a little bit flatter. kind of You could get it good. from the neighbor kids. Sure, you can steal from the neighbor kids. <laughs> Brad always <laughs> says that gently. We can always steal from them. <laughs> but you can just do a couple hallelujah stretches over the back. Yep. Again, because... You, we want to avoid that you are not going to be rounded out, but you probably are going to round your back out. It's pretty to hard to garden and not get flexed over. And you get involved with your work, you're not going to be thinking about your back. You're thinking about those weeds. Yeah. And every so often, what I want you to do is go ahead and do some press backs like this yep. when you're in the garden. Like the pregnant ladies, a lot of times you see them doing these uh, uh, naturally. Well, yeah, I yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To help uh, take some of the I don't know if they're back. gardening that much, yeah. though. All right. Number three, as much as possible, you want to keep your back in what we call the locked in position. You got the booyah stick, Brad? Yeah. A good posture position. Yeah. You want to show it? Sure. Okay. So we want the shoulders back, the arch in the low back. And if you use a stick like this, we use the booyah stick, and it touches right here at your belt line or below at the sacrum between your shoulder blades. And your head. So it's got three points of contact. Touch, touch, touch. Obviously, you're not going to use this when you go out <laughs> gardening. But the idea is to visually think about this, that there's this stick there and that it's in place. So whenever you do something, whether it's bending down to pick something up, you're keeping the, that same posture. This really helped my wife when I, when I was trying to tell her how to bend mm -hmm. forward and stuff. I said, picture the, that stick there. 
and that you're having to keep everything in alignment. And she goes, you know, it just really helped her right. uh, stay out of trouble. That's why as part of your exercise program, do, you know, 10 of these a day and it helps that muscle memory. And so you real your body realizes how you should bend when you're bending while you work. Right. So when you do bend, you're going to bend with the back straight. And also avoid prolonged bending as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, if you're bent like this for any length of time, you're putting an amazing amount of stress on the back. Sure. So as much as you can keep straight like this. So going up to number five, actually, whenever possible, take pressure off your back by leaning on something. Sure. Um, maybe you're going to have a wheelbarrow. Maybe you're going to have a shovel. Yeah. Um, yeah. You see a lot of the guys, road guys, working on leaning on their shovels, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just giving you guys a hard time. Yeah, don't yeah. don't, yeah, don't, don't get, get some group, feedback. Get, we'll get, have people pounding on the door. But maybe you get a wheelbarrow or something. But whenever you can lean on something, it's going to take a lot of stress off your back. Right. I actually even have people that to take pressure off the back. I have actually have put, put their elbows I was on just their knees. See, yep, that old elbow on the knee trick works yep. really nice. See, I can keep my back straight, but the elbows on the knee, and th you can actually even. Pull a weed like this. Yeah, just the, the single elbow. Right. <laughs> now, ideally, what you're going to want to do is actually kneel down on, on some of those things. Because um, by kneeling, you, you're not having to bend over the back as much as uh, as much as, right. as, 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 as it normally takes. So you may kneel down doing more of a, like a, a lunge, going right. down like this, right. versus putting down two knees. You know? Right. So, and I think a big thing is, is that you're just not stuck in one of these positions for a long period of time. You're going to maybe yeah. switch knees, yeah. get Movement. up, do your stretch. And that's, the, that's number seven again. Remember oh. to do some of the back bends. I'd say every 20 to 30 minutes, if you, again, you're falling that category, you can do these. And after doing a heavy lift, I always do. I, every time I lift something really heavy, I stand up and I do one of these. And you might want to do it before. It, exactly. Before, before and do, after. Yeah, yeah it's uh, right, wonderful. Can I have the shovel? Oh, yeah. Now you want the shovel. Yeah. Huh? Here, be careful with yeah, it. Yeah, be though. careful. Da -da 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 -da. Remember Ooh. that? Yeah, that, that from? would Don't be say, Don't tell Billy's. No, it's not. Let them tell. They'll tell you what it is. Okay, yeah. By the way, this is, I must have stole this from a neighbor. It's <laughs> Bob. Oh my God! It's got somebody else's name on there. Yeah, but. well, whatever. So when you shovel, one thing that helps a lot is to tighten your core. Yes. Like let's say right when you're about to pull and lift something, tighten your core as much as possible. What you want to do is you don't want to go down like this. You actually want to bend your hips. That's why a wide base really works. Exactly. So you want to get. You want to remember, you know, get into this pattern of going down you, like this. You should face this way. You got a really nice demonstration of keeping your back arch. Can you see, get, move this elbow out of the way? Oh. There you go. That right there is the key part of. So I, I can also go like this as much as possible when you're shoveling. Don't sh bend and twist. Yeah. So I don't go like this and like this. I want to go like this and throw it straight ahead. But that that isn't going to happen all the time. But you that do doesn't the, have all the time. Do the best you can. Do the best you can. Yeah. We realize some of this is going to be very difficult to do. Yeah. We're giving you guidelines. So hopefully you're going to try to do the best you can. Same with raking or hoeing. You want to make sure you're keeping the back straight. You're bending down. You're you're keeping the legs wide apart. And you're using the body as much as possible yeah. as opposed to going back and forth with the the, butt, the back. Yeah, so try to avoid those reaching way out yeah. with it, to, you know, to get right. that long distance it's reach. Moving the leg as much as possible really helps a lot. It'd be like you're dancing out there. Yep, you're dancing with the rake or dancing with the hoe. The so, neighbors may talk, but that's all right. That's a woman used to date, wasn't it a hoe? <laughs> oh, wow, oh, this is a, a family, family show. show. That right. was, you're going to get hollered right. at for that. Number 10, you want to do an <laughs> incremental buildup. You don't want to start off, and this is the one, uh, Brett, you're bad. Nobody's going to listen to me on this one. Everybody's going to go out. It's going to be a nice day, and yeah. they're going to put in like six oh. hours of, of of work the first day, and they're going to be so sore the next day. Right. And they're going to be sunburned, and they're going to be. Eh, right. Well, there might be a few people, like, say if my wife wanted me to do it, because I'm not a gardener. Yeah. Garden for an hour. Sit in the chair and for say, an hour. Bob and Brad said I'm not supposed to go out there <laughs> exactly. that long. But my sister, we actually just did a video on her knee pain, 
and and uh, she couldn't figure out why she was getting knee pain again. And she had put in a full weekend of, of gardening. Outdoor, yeah. And then the next weekend, she listened to me, and she actually didn't do anything, and her knee pain went away. Oh. So she realized that that did fire it up. She's probably going to get you a gift. No, I don't think so. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway, incremental buildup. You know, work into you got the muscles got to adapt to it. They got to be get, getting accustomed to working. Uh, it's basically you're working out to some extent. Oh, right. Yeah. It's like an athlete. This one, I apologize, but we don't have an example to show wow. you. But there is a thing called a reacher. So this is a device that has a little handle on the end. Yep. You squeeze it, and it actually has little prongs that can pick things up. If you've been in the hospital with a hip or knee replacement, then you almost certainly know what yep. a reacher is. They're very common. You can almost pick a quarter off the floor with them. I mean, oh, they, they really yeah. work pretty well. Yeah. They are inexpensive. They're only like 12 bucks. We'll put a link below. Normally we'd have one, but because of the, the, the virus thing going yeah. on, we had to when, shift up our we're not equipment. at our facility. Mm -hmm. So what's nice about those, if you're going to pick twigs off the, off the ground and stuff yeah. like that, use the reacher. You don't have to bend all the way over. Yeah. Every time you bend over your back, even if you're lifting something very light, still putting stress on your sure. back. Yeah. So, you know, like we get, uh, we got a long gravel driveway. Oh, uh, yeah. our cabin, and, and uh, I I take a reacher there, or I, oh, I'll take a thing and just flip the sticks off the road that way, you know, because I don't want to bend over for each twig. Right, I, I thought you were because you don't have a dog. Maybe you'd flip in the dog. Flip in the dog. Oh, the dog. Oh, dude. I see. No, no, no. Yeah, that's an issue do, too. No. You know. All right, and number tw eleven. Uh, get help with the hard stuff. Oh, right. I mean, uh, yeah. Don't be a hero here. If something's heavy, get some help with it. If it's too hard for you, like you know, wheeling a wheelbarrow, have someone else do it. Get Brad to do it. <laughs> Call him up. Yeah, you actually, I've got my nephew. We're doing that stuff for me now. Are oh, you really? Yeah, yeah that was yeah. working out pretty good. I got Mike lifting our cameraman <laughs> lifting our stuff. All right, this is the favorite thing my wife likes. It's both a bench and a kneeler. How does it work, Bob? I don't get it. So you can put it down. And you can sit on it. Oh, I see. Yeah. And you can do some of your, your gardening that way. It's padded. Right. But where she really likes it, Brad, is for the kneeling part of it. She uses this all the time around the house yep. for, like, painting. Oh, In sure. fact, I, this isn't hers. I just got her another one because she she uses she one. She broke it? Cabin. No, she uses it at the you cabin. You broke it. I said I'd get her another one. But she has paint all over it because oh, she's right. always painting. Well, show how it works. Yeah, so you just put it down. I'm going to put it down over here. And you, what these handles are there. Yeah, so that you is can kneel nice. down nice. Now, if you have pain right on your knee, you might want to stay more on the shin part of it. Mm -hmm. You might want to be right here. And, in fact, if you've had a knee replacement, that's what we teach people is to kneel down off the knee mm -hmm. and more onto the shin. But this is so nice because you, you can actually do dips here. I mean, you, you can, it, it'll help you stand up. And that's, if, as you get older, you'll find out that's one of the problems, isn't it, Brad? Yeah, and Trying it's to, got a nice cushion on both sides, you know, almost an inch thick. Yeah, we actually, we were having some work done here uh, by a contractor. And and my wife goes, "You oh, try this once. And, and he's like, oh, gosh. Maybe <laughs> he, he's going to get one. Yeah. So, yeah, steady for sitting on, uh, mm -hmm. just a nice device, and it folds up. Yeah, conveniently. Yeah, how does it fold up again? Like that, yeah. Squeeze it. Oh, yep, look at that. that. Look at that. Then and you can you put it in your then. car. Yep. yep, yep. So it works out nice. It is nice. What do they call it? I think it was, Mike, a garden kneeler, garden something, yeah. garden bench. Just Google garden there's, kneeler There's bench. a bunch of them. Yeah, they're yeah, all over we'll the We'll put a link below. Yep. So, All right, thanks, everybody, for watching. Let's hear your comments. Be careful. While you're gardening. <laughs>